Wow. Lots of well-deserved spirit for your girl boss panel. <laughs> this is amazing. I love it. Have you ever been to a stage quite like this one before? I'm not when people are cheering for me. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Well, welcome, ladies. Uh, what an outstanding group of women I have beside me here. I'm so excited and so in awe of them to have this opportunity to talk about what it means to be a girl boss and kind of delving into that a little bit further. So we asked the girls in the video, what does being a girl boss mean to them? So I want to know from you, what does it mean to be a girl boss and why was it important for you to be on this panel? Well, hi, everyone. Uh, <laughs> hi, what's going Nanique on? Nanique Alley and everybody. Being a girl boss, uh, to me, it just, it really means being in control of your destiny, of your future, being in the, the driving, driver's seat of, you know, the road of life. You get to pick the car, you get to pick the path. Yes, you're going to encounter some speed bumps and, and roadblocks along the way, but you make the decision ultimately about what way you're going to turn. You're un unapologetically yourself all the time. And it's just, th that's sort of what it means for me, you know, having that, that, that control and that freedom. Yeah, I, I would add to that. Um, but first of all, I just want to say, you're the most ultimate girl boss for organizing this killer event for all of us. So bravo. That's why I'm going to get my invitation for next year. <laughs> Suck up to the boss. <laughs> um, I'm a privilege and honor to be here. I, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of, it's a, it takes a lot to be a boss, but it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Very much what Anika just said, but it, it's also about taking accountability and responsibility for the decisions that you make. That's a big deal. Uh, not trying to slough off responsibility onto somebody else if something goes wrong, and things always go wrong. But it's also about recognizing that you aren't necessarily the best at doing something in the room and finding others around you that can do it too. So if you're a business owner, the, the saying goes, you know, you hire your weaknesses. So you're, you, you're not necessarily best at everything, but you afford people around you the opportunity to collaborate, to talk, to lead as well. And ultimately, like for, for what I do on a regular basis, I have to do a lot more listening than I do talking because I know I don't necessarily have the best ideas, but someone has to choreograph, someone has to orchestrate, and ultimately someone has to make a decision. And usually that's when the boss comes in. boss as I've been chasing a dream of space travel is following a passion but while you're following that passion not being afraid to work outside of your comfort zone to test your own limits and to always be willing to try new things even if that means you face fear and vulnerability along the way now Natalie <laughs> so Natalie's a, a rocket scientist okay I you know the saying where you always go well it's not rocket science you know I can't be that bad if I mess this up it would be bad if you messed this up. Um, that's, that's my thought process. So I think that sort of leads to this idea of just dealing with pressure and challenge and maybe describing a time where you really felt like you overcame a challenge uh, and how you went about doing so. Absolutely. So the example that comes to mind for me is trying to get an internship at NASA, actually. I had come across this scholarship that sent one Canadian student down to NASA to intern for a summer, and I actually ended up applying for that four times. I was rejected all four times that I applied for that internship, and I ended up being so frustrated that I just wanted feedback on my application to find out what I could be doing better, what types of other experiences I needed to get that internship. I ended up calling someone at NASA's Office of Higher Education, and within two minutes of that conversation, had the internship position offered to me on the spot. So I think I can really say that perseverance has been a foundation of my career, and it's okay if you don't see, succeed the first, second, third, or fourth times, as long as you're following your passion. I love that. And Adrian, you're the editor-in-chief. Like, come on, we have some amazing titles on this panel here. You're the editor-in-chief of the Toronto Sun. This is, this is a major deal. Um, first minority woman, is this correct? Yeah, I was the first South Asian woman to run a major metropolitan newspaper in North America. 
It's pretty cool. So I'm sure you face some challenges on a day-to-day -day basis. What? Give us an example of a challenge and, and a time that you overcame it. Well, I have... I'm a lot older than these young women on the, ta on the stage here with me, so I, I bring a little bit of uh, expertise, I think, with having been in different, working in different capacities which have been predominantly male-oriented. I've worked in politics, I've worked in the army, um, I, and now, of course, in, in, in journalism. But I never really viewed it as a challenge or obstacle. I was just, you just sort of, you learn with mistakes and, and things like that. But my, I would say my biggest hurdles really only came from myself. I know that sounds sort of cliche, and you kind of hear that all the time, but it's true. Uh, if, if I wasn't able to accomplish X, then I thought, well, I can't do Y. So, but you, you're only as good as how much more own motivation you're prepared to give yourself. There will be lots of people around you all of your life that tell you you can't do something. You don't have to listen to them because you know you can do something. And I didn't have um, a lot of mentors because doing what I did, they're just, it just wasn't the way it was at the time. You are all afforded an opportunity where you can mentor each other. You have role models that um, are positive. Sometimes we don't have the best, uh, sometimes there's negative role models too. But you'll figure it out pretty quickly. And uh, I think just overall, I all I would simply say is like, if you don't fall and scrape your knees a few times, then you don't learn anything. So you can't have success all your life because failure helps you succeed. That's a very good point. Yes. And Anika, you, you know, you are a TV host, anchor, familiar face on CP24, right? Yes. And recently, you've done a complete career change, you know? In many ways, now you're out on your own, you're very entrepreneurial, you have your own lifestyle channel, and uh, you're representing that. So maybe within that, there's a number of challenges, but what would you say for you has been a challenge that you've overcome? Yeah, that whole decision, as you can well imagine, was, was wrought with, with lots of doubt and a lot of people who, you just, a lot of people don't understand your vision. A lot of people don't understand you, your choices. And you just have to act in spite of. You have to still, you know, always believe in yourself and listen to your gut and know that, listen, this is my life. I know that I have other things that I would like to do and, and sort of go with that. So many, many obstacles in my decision to leave CP24 and sort of doing my own thing. But when I think about my, my life in general, um, I grew up in, in the Caribbean on an island called St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, I was born in Canada but grew up there. Uh, so coming back to Canada, uh, I felt like I was at a disadvantage in, in, in general because here I am moving from this country with 100,000 100, people, going into school, and it, it just, that in itself propelled me to kind of want to do more and to, to push myself to, to prove to people that I can do it. Um, but probably the biggest <laughs> obstacle was when I was around, I'd say maybe 16, six, 17, I was 17, my mom was, was diagnosed with breast cancer. And um, it was a, a, a challenging time in my life because in, in, I had just moved on to A-level college, which is what you call it in St. Vincent when you finish high school. And, um, I was kind of a, a bit of denial at the time. I didn't want to own up to the fact that this is what was happening in my life. And she had to come to Canada to get treatment and I was just going to do my exams and so I couldn't leave and so I wasn't with her. And it was just a, a strange time for me. I ended up actually, this is a bit of a TMI, um, getting a boyfriend who was like, 10, 11 years older than me at the time. Wow. Yes. Yes, That's my friend. some reaction. But it was because I feel like I was trying to distract myself from the situation at hand. And 
I, I don't know. It, it was just one of those things where it was a big, a big obstacle and, and my family was going through this thing and we just really had to band together and in terms of how we, we, we face that and we, we overcome it was we just were always positive. There was no other option uh, but survival. There was no other option but, but her pushing through this and I was, was sort of able to to, to, to use that positivity, and that's something that I, 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 I carry with for in, in so many other aspects of my life, just always having a positive outlook. So sometimes those kind of obstacles turn into to, to life lessons, so to speak, uh, and it also taught me to, to search within myself for gratification and for, for motivation and not necessarily a boyfriend. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, ladies? Thank you. And this is amazing because three very accomplished women, we look at you, we hear your incredible resumes. Um, and I think for many people in the audience, we start to wonder who you were when you were younger. How many of you in the audience are high school? Okay, I wanna hear you cheer, it's hard to see. Cheer if you're in high school, okay? Cheer if you're in elementary school. So, I want you- Elementary school for the win. <laughs> And we're actually gonna be opening it up very shortly, ladies, for you to potentially ask some questions to our panelists. We don't have a ton of time left, but I wanna make sure that we do so. Before we get there, I wanna know, what is one piece of advice that you would want your younger self to know? Looking back from where you come from, um, what is it that you want your younger self to know? I think for me, looking back, because I've gone down this trajectory of science and engineering, I wish I would have done more hands-on type projects when I was in elementary school or high school. In university, I got to help build a solar-powered car that we drove across North America, and that was one of my most valuable experiences because literally every day we were building things with our hands, experimenting, making, tinkering, and learning from failure on a daily basis. And every day when you learn from failure, you learn how to prioritize and to make decisions and how to feed those failures forward into success. So don't be afraid, like I said at the beginning, to go outside your comfort zone, try new things, and just build. Get your hands literally dirty. I think, I think there's a couple of things that I would think about, and I, and I hope this is relevant to, to all of you here at being in high school and in elementary school. The best is yet to come. It may suck right now, maybe awkward, maybe uncomfortable, but it's going to get better and it's going to be amazing. So that's what I would have told myself back then. But the, on the more practical side, I would have told myself to also save 10% of everything I earned. <laughs> because the housing market's through the roof. So, you know, there's a little financial literacy tip, but, but there's, there's my practical uh, advice on that. Love it. Like, very much so. I agree with both of those things as well. Another big thing for me is sort of just to not to lose yourself and to, to, to truly understand who you are. And it's a very vague statement, but you have to think about what that really means, what you like, what you don't like. And, you know, we spend a lot of time obsessing over, you know, maybe musicians or YouTubers or people who you love. You know every single detail about these people, their favorite colors, their likes, their dislikes. But you don't spend a lot of time getting to know who you truly are. And to me, that, even where I am right now, had I done that a lot, when I was younger, instead of just going along with the flow of what people wanted me to do and what parents wanted to do and teachers and all that kind of stuff, instead of sick sticking to who I, I was, who I am at the core of who you really are, and you know it deep down who you are in your gut, if you stay true to that, you will, you, you'll, you'll never do wrong. So I, I, I would certainly have reminded myself that. Some great advice, <laughs> wonderful advice. I'm looking now into the audience. We have time, we have about five minutes left here to get a few audience questions in. Is there something that you'd really like to know about our girl bosses? If so, I'm looking, thank you, the lights, this is great. I'm looking for the volunteers with the mic to give me a wave when they're ready. How about right over here, yes. Natalie, what inspired you to be a rocket scientist? 
So I was actually inspired to be an astronaut. That's been my lifelong dream. And what I will say is I've never really known a clear path to getting there. I've kind of just found my way as I've gone. And then what I've realized is we always get caught up on making the wrong choice or the wrong decision. But if you look at it as multiple different paths you can take with different experiences to tell along the way, you'll have a really positive experience in whatever you do. Thank you. Excellent. Where's my next volunteer with a question? Up top over here? Up top on the balcony. Where's my next volunteer? I'm seeing waving, but I'm not seeing it from the volunteers. <laughs> Where's the microphone? Right back there? Okay, top of the orchestra. How does being a TV star for... <laughs> Anika? Anika, um, how does it mess with your social life and how do you overcome it? Uh, Right, so when I worked at CB24, I was a reporter, anchor, morning show host on the weekends, and um, Getting into this this career, you had to sac I had to sacrifice a lot. When my friends were out clubbing and having fun, I was working on the weekends at CFRB and, and Weather Network and so forth. So it certainly does um, affect your ability to to be social. But now that I run my own digital media thing. I can reconnect with family because to me, I've learned over time that family is, is, is priority and that's what, where I wanna focus my attention. So um, it does affect your social life. However, if you love it, then it is part of your life anyway and then the people you work with become your friends. So I'm not saying that if you wanna be a journalist or if you wanna go into that field that it's a negative thing. It just really depends on your perspective and, and you know that kind of thing. We're entering into the last three minutes of our panel, so I want to make sure that we kind of do rapid fire, okay? So it's like a rapid fire question, rapid fire answer, so we can get a few more in here. Where the microphone at? That's the question. Where is it? Where is it? Wherever it is, please speak. You said you had to persevere a lot. What skill sets helped you get through it, your troubles? In general, so skill sets that uh, help them overcome obstacles in their life? Um, strength, courage, the ability to recognize that you can't fix everything. Um, family, friends are also integral part of your, uh, of your growth process and realizing you just can't fix everything and accepting that, really. Excellent, up top. Do we have one up top on the balcony? If you have a, a microphone on top of the balcony, can I please have a question? Um, for Ms. Batra, was being a newspaper chief editor was your actual dream, or did you have like another dream? No, I, I, I'm, it's a great question, and I'll answer it as quickly as I possibly can. I'm kind of an accidental journalist. I fell into it um, based on a whole bunch of other things that I used to do, like in my career, like through politics and media and stuff. I uh, moved into this world. Um, did I think that I would become the editor-in-chief? No, um, that was pretty incredible and I'm, it was a very exciting opportunity. So it's, uh, it's, it's been a, a pretty incredible journey. And just quickly, you know, we talk about obstacles, like on a daily basis, putting a newspaper out the door every day is not an easy thing to do. But this is just more broadly speaking, I have an extraordinary team around me who, who help do that. And that's another thing that you should all remember is, your team and your people around you make you better and you make them better. All right, we're into the last minute here, girls. I'm gonna finish with a question. We didn't get to talk about this in Natalie's section. I think it's really important. I wanna talk about STEM and you got about a minute to do this. STEM for girls, do we know what that stands for? Science, technology. Well done. Why is it important to you to get girls and women into STEM fields? I think we can change the world through technology. We can build sustainable and resilient communities and the more different mindsets we have working on the most pressing problems of our time, the more we can create healthy and positive communities in the future. And so don't be afraid to get involved in science and tech projects because you can make a really positive difference. Amazing job, round of applause for your Girl Boss panel. Incredible job, ladies.